This is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Soy Bifa Jackridge. Authorities and communities across the United Arab Emirates were clearing debris on Wednesday after a torrential downpour killed at least one person and caused damage to homes and businesses. The UAE witnessed a record rainfall with 254mm falling in A1A on Tuesday in less than 24 hours. According to the National Metrology Center, that was the most since records began in 1949 before the country was established in 1971. Although heavy rains had eased by late Tuesday, disruptions were continued on Wednesday with Emirates Airline suspending check-in for passengers departing Dubai airports until midnight. Dubai International Airport, one of the world's busiest, said it was facing significant disruptions after the heavy rains delayed or diverted flights and had impacted flight crews. Passengers departing Dubai were advised against heading to the airport and to check their flight status with their airline. Emirates said passengers who were already in transit would continue to be processed but warning that delays to departure and arrivals should be expected. The Dubai airport website showed hours long delays for some arrival and departure flights. Local media reported that an Emirati man in his 70s died on Tuesday morning when his vehicle was caught in flash floods in the Ras Al Khaima Emirates in the country's nuts. In neighboring Oman, 19 people died including second, including school children after three consecutive days of heavy rain, according to Omani Media, which published images of flooded communities. The Times of Oman reported that more rain was expected on Wednesday. In Dubai, the skies were clear, but in some areas, the roads were quiet after the government ordered its employees and all schools to work remotely for a second consecutive day. UAE media and social media posts showed significant damage from the torrential downpour in some parts of the country, including collapsed roads and homes inundated by water. The Telegram messaging app, one of the most popular social media platforms, will likely cross 1 billion active monthly users within a year as it is spreading like forest fire. Its billionaire founder, Pavel Durov, said on Tuesday, Telegram, based in Dubai, was founded by Russian-born Durov, who left Russia in 2014 after he refused to comply with demands to shut down opposition communities on his VK social media platform, which he served. Durov, who is estimated by Forbes, to have a fortune of $15.5 billion, said some governments had sought to pressure him but the app, which has now 900 million active users, should remain a neutral platform and not a player in geopolitics. One of Telegram's main rivals, Meta Platforms, WhatsApp, has more than 2 billion monthly active users. The Financial Times reported in March that Telegram would likely aim for a US listing once the company had reached profitability. Telegram, which is patched particularly influential in the republics of the former Soviet Union, is ranked as one of the major social media platforms after Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, Instagram, TikTok, and WeChat. After Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, Telegram has become the main source of unfiltered and sometimes graphic and misleading content from both sides about the war and the politics surrounding the conflict. Haiti's government on Tuesday named the members of a transitional council set to take power when Prime Minister Ariel Henry steps down, inching closer to putting in place measures that could restore security in the violence racked country. The council is expected to choose a leader and a prime minister and wield certain presidential powers by majority votes. Its mandate runs February 2026. The government, however, did not give a date for the council's installment, and local lawyers have won that the process of confirming the members could be long and several nominees could be rejected. Henry left Haiti in February to seek international help for the country's police in the battles with armed and powerful gangs when worsening violence blocked his return. Henry announced his resignation. Finance Minister Mitchell Patrick Bosvet has since been in charge, though his actions have been limited to signing off on ninth-time curfews. The Transitional Council, which has been long delayed and was 
appropriation was only formalized on Friday will conclude seven voting members and two non-voting members. The voting members are former Central Bank Governor Fritz Afon Zergin, former Ambassador to the Dominican Republic Smith Augustine, Barrister Emmanuel Betlare, former Senate President Edgar Lee Blank, ex-Senator Louis Gerald Gills, businessman Lawrence St. Sir, and Leslie Volta, a former diplomat. The non-voting observers are Evangelical Pastor Frenel Joseph and Regin Abraham, who once worked for the World Bank and the country's Environment Ministry. Violence has escalated in Henry's absence with gangs attacking areas they do not yet control, but and the capital's airport remain closed. At least 360,000 people have been displaced and nearly half the country is going hungry. The name of late Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar cannot be registered as an EU trademark. The European Court of Justice ruled on Wednesday after his brother tried to lay a claim. The court upheld the decision of the EU's intellectual property office that refused the trademark application by Escobar Inc. in 2022. EU IPO correctly found that those persons would associate the name of Pablo Escobar with drug trafficking and narco terrorism and with the crimes and suffering resulting therefrom rather than with his possible good deeds in favor of the poor in Colombia. The court said in a statement, Escobar Incorporated was founded in Puerto Rico by Pablo Escobar's brother Roberto de Jesus Escobar Gaviria who spent 12 years in prison for his role in his brother's criminal organization. Gaviria said in 2020 that his company would launch a foldable smartphone called the Escobar Fold 1. The company currently sells a cryptocurrency called Escobar Cash. According to its website, Pablo Escobar led one of the world's most powerful criminal organizations, the Medellin Cartel. His fortune made from trafficking cocaine was established by Forbes in 1987 to have reached over $3 billion, although some accounts put it at much higher. Thousands of people were killed in cartel-related violence during and after his death in 1993 when he was shot by security forces. China's military said on Wednesday it sent fighter jets to monitor and warn a U.S. Navy patrol aircraft that flew over the sensitive Taiwan Strait, a mission that took place just hours after a call between the Chinese and U.S. defense chiefs. China claims sovereignty over democratically governed Taiwan and says it has jurisdiction over the Strait. Taiwan and the United States dispute that, saying the Taiwan Strait is an international waterway. The U.S. Navy's 7th Fleet said the P-8 a Poisedon Maritime Patrol and Reconnaissance Plane, which is also used for anti-submarine missions, flew over the strait in international airspace. By operating within the Taiwan Strait in accordance with international law, the United States upholds the navigational rights and freedoms of all nations. It said in a statement, the aircraft's transit of the Taiwan Strait demonstrates the United States' commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific. China's military described the flight as public hype, adding it had sent fighters to monitor and warn the U.S. plane and deal with, the, with it in accordance with the law and regulations. Taiwan's defense ministry said that the U.S. aircraft flew south through the strait and that Taiwanese forces had monitored the situation but observed nothing unusual. There was no immediate reaction from China. The last time the U.S. Navy announced a Poseidon had flown through the strait. In December, China's military said it had also sent fighters jet to monitor and warn the aircraft. The latest Poseidon mission came shortly after U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke with Chinese Defense Ministry Dong Zhong. The first engagement the two have had in more than a year as the two countries seek to restore military ties. Dong told Justin that the Taiwan issue is core of China's core interests and China's core interests must absolutely not be hemmed, according to a readout from his ministry. The United States and Taiwan's most important important international backer and am um, supplier despite the absence of formal diplomatic ties and the issue is a constant irritant for Sino-US relations. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Updates. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy Wednesday.